Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lion's Den. This is the Weekly Roar! Today I'm continuing to recap the lessons learned in leadership, two at a time, from my last series, Lessons Learned in Leadership. Since that series started well over seven months ago, I want to go back over the lessons in a Reader's Digest fashion and bring back the highlights for you to keep those lessons fresh in your mind. So this week, we're rewinding the clock again and going back to February of 2021 and talking about Lessons 17 and 18. Now, before we jump into that, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Greg Storch, owner of Lion Enterprise, host of The Weekly Roar, and the founder of a worldwide bartered coaching program called The Helping Hand. I'm a certified professional leadership coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. Oh, and as a friendly reminder, you can find all of these video resources on my website at lion-enterprise.com. Just look for the Lion's Pride Library and check them all out. Okay, let's start with the recap of Lesson 17, and I called that one a leader's best teacher. In leadership lesson number 17, I talked about an old proverb from Julius Caesar who said, experience is the teacher of all things. But what I've come to understand is that it isn't the experience that becomes the best teacher. It's evaluated experience that allows us to learn the lesson. What I meant that day was that in order to take away lessons from our experiences, we have to take the time to reflect and evaluate those experiences. When it comes to leadership, having experience helps followers build trust in their leaders. But there are some leaders who can have many years of experience, but not much wisdom to show for it. Now, here's the example I used back in February to make this point. I told the story of the commanding officer of one of the Navy's fast attack submarines. He was the leader of 135 sailors. Well, back in 2018, he was fired due to a loss of confidence in his ability to lead. He later pleaded guilty at a special court martial to conduct unbecoming an officer and a gentleman because he engaged in inappropriate relationships with the spouse of an enlisted subordinate. Now, that officer joined the Navy in 1999. So for almost 20 years, he rose through the ranks. He received training and he gained the experience needed to become the leader of that fast attack submarine. Not only did he have the experience of training in these matters, but he most likely experienced sailors under his leadership who were caught and punished for the same things. So that story served as a great example of a leader who had the experience, but not the wisdom from those experiences. It's what we do with our experiences that matters most. We can't just speed through life without acknowledging our experience, or we could recognize them but not give them much thought, or we can acknowledge the experiences we've had and take the time to reflect and gain the insight and wisdom from those experiences. And this was the key takeaway for this lesson learned, and it was that the act of reflection gives us the ability to turn our experience into insight. You know, there's a big difference between having the know-how to do something and having the know-why. So during that weekly roar, I told others that effective leaders and successful people all evaluate their experiences 
to take away the lesson. I also shared four things to understand about experience in order to effectively evaluate it. So here they are again. The first thing I said that we need to know about experience is that our understanding always lags our experience. It doesn't matter who you are. No one can escape experiences. We all have them. And it doesn't really matter how smart you are either. When it comes to gaining an understanding of your experience, it will always be after the fact. For this first thing, I encouraged others not to just give up and keep moving forward because we can still make the most of what we can understand. It requires awareness around the experiences we have. By taking the time to look back at our successes and failures, the goals we've achieved, and not only the new relationships we've made, but also the ones we've set aside, we can begin to close the gap between what we experience and what we understand. But remember, no matter what you do, the understanding of yours will always lag your experience. The second thing I shared about experience was that, in the words of Zig Ziglar, our attitude determines our altitude. In other words, our attitude about our experiences, good or bad, has a direct impact on our personal growth. Life is full of setbacks and unforeseen detours. You've had them, I've had them, and I guarantee everyone we know has had them. But what we do with them is what makes the difference. So remember, your attitude towards the unpleasant experiences specifically will determine your growth. Now, the third thing I shared that day that we need to understand about experience was that when you don't evaluate and learn from it, you pay the price. Experience gives us the test first and then the lesson later. But there are some people who pay the price of that experience without ever getting the lesson because when an experience is negative, our natural tendency is to run the other way. But in order for us to gain that wisdom and improve in our leadership, we need to not only learn something from our experiences, but also learn something positive. So if you don't want to pay the price for something you don't get, then make sure you spend time evaluating and learning from your experiences. And then that brings me to the fourth and final thing I wanted others to know about experience, and that was those who take the time to evaluate it stand out from others. Now, I told people that day about some of the people I know who make it a practice to reflect on their experiences. They make it a regular practice to evaluate what went right and what went wrong when they reflect on their own experiences, and they stand out from others. If you were to meet them, you could easily see there's just something different about them. And that difference is that they've learned lessons from their experiences. You know, life provides us with tons of experiences. <laughs> Some we expect and others we don't. But all of them can teach us valuable lessons as long as we want to learn and are willing to reflect on them. If you are, you'll not only be a person of integrity and wisdom, but you'll also be an asset to those who follow you because you will also be a better leader. Here's the takeaway from this lesson. We have to be intentional when it comes to evaluating our experiences. Experience doesn't mean a whole lot if we don't have the wisdom gained from the experiences. And the only way to gain that wisdom is to reflect on the experience to find the lesson in it. If I have an experience and do nothing with it or learn nothing from it, what good is having the experience at all? 
And so now you remember why I always say experience isn't the best teacher. Evaluated experience is. All right. Now that brings me to the recap of another one of my favorite lessons learned in leadership. And I called that lesson the ultimate secret to a good meeting. <laughs> now, I opened up that lesson with a quote that I once read in a book that said, a meeting is an event <laughs> where the minutes are kept and the hours are lost. <laughs> now, admittedly, that was a strange lesson to share during the weekly roar. I've been in more meetings than I could care to count. And they have a bad rap, especially if you're someone who values results. <laughs> if you are, then you may struggle with meetings because meetings aren't usually characterized by making progress and taking actions. <laughs> Honestly, I think that lesson got off to a bad start the first time I shared it. It probably sounded as if I was just bashing meetings there are time when leaders need to meet with people, and whenever that happens, the point of the meeting should be to get something done. Good leaders are the ones who learn how to make their meetings effective. And that's why I quickly turned that lesson around to focus on the big secret that I promised to share that day. The thing was, meetings aren't meant to be used as time savers, where we pull a bunch of people into a meeting room and deliver our message one time. So I shared what the basic purpose of a meeting should be, and that was to get stuff done. And then I went straight to the ultimate secret, and that was the meeting before the meeting. <laughs> That's right. Have the meeting before the meeting. I continued to say that good leaders identify who their key players are for their upcoming meetings. And then they hold a meeting with just them beforehand, which ensures that all of them are on the same sheet of music. If you want to have meetings where you actually get stuff done, then you have to have that meeting before the meeting in order to prepare people for the meeting. During this weekly roar, I shared some of the reasons why it's so important to have that meeting before the meeting. And that first reason why was because that meeting before the meeting gives your key players a sense of ownership. That's right. This is where you start getting buy-in and you're going to need that for the other meeting. Nobody likes surprises. It's just human nature to react negatively to information that surprises us. Remember, people will be down on what they aren't up on. So when that happens, the meeting's doomed. It's over before it starts. The meeting will veer off course and come to a halt. So that's why it's important to get your influencers to buy in ahead of time. And you can do that in your meeting before the meeting. The second reason I shared was that you want to be able to share your perspective. You know, everyone has their own perspective about things, but as leaders, we need to invest time and be intentional with helping others see things the way we do. There aren't any shortcuts to this one if you want people to see things from your point of view. People aren't going to follow our suggestions just because We'll never get anywhere with an approach like that. If you expect people to just pick things up as they go and you continually surprise them, they'll eventually get frustrated and dig their heels in so things stop moving forward. The secret here is to give your influencers the right perspective in that meeting before the meeting, and they'll become allies when you're trying to spread your vision to everyone else. The third reason why you should have that meeting before the meeting was all about influence. That's exactly how leaders can increase their influence. If you don't make people feel valued, then there's no way to really build any kind of positive relationship with others. It does nothing for them and 
in the end, it does nothing for your influence. You know, I've said it plenty of times, leadership is influence. And one of the best ways to gain influence with others is by investing in them. And in this case, investing your time. When it comes to meetings, investing your time in the meeting before the meeting is a sure way to increase your influence. And that brought me to the fourth reason I shared that day. And that was because it helps leaders develop trust. Now, you've heard me talk about one of the things that creates a stable foundation in our leadership, and that always includes trust. We have to have it from others. One of the most challenging things for a leader to do is create change. And in order to be successful at it, they have to have the trust of their people. When we hold a meeting before the meeting, it gives us the chance to develop that trust by giving our influencers the chance to have their questions answered, to hear your motives, and get details that you might not share in the meeting after the meeting. All of these things give us the opportunity to build trust with our influencers at that meeting before the meeting. And you'll need to have that trust if you want to achieve the intended outcome of the big meeting. Well, then I shared the fifth and final reason why it was important for us to have a meeting before the meeting. And that was because it avoids the unwelcomed surprise or the blind side. See, good leaders typically have their fingers on the pulse of their organizations. They have a good understanding of what's happening because they have strong leadership intuition. Good leaders are connected to their people, and because of that, they have a good sense of things like the morale of their people, the momentum, and even the culture. But even the best leaders can miss something. So sometimes during that meeting, before the meeting, the people we're speaking with will share information that can help us avoid making a big mistake. After I shared the five reasons why it's important to have that meeting before the meeting, I also shared three simple rules to follow about the meeting before the meeting. Here they are again. First of all, if you can't have that meeting before the meeting, then don't have the meeting. <laughs> the second one is, if you hold that meeting before the meeting, but it doesn't go well, don't have the meeting. And then the third one was, if you have the meeting before the meeting and all goes as planned, then hold your meeting. Remember this, having a good meeting is a matter of preparation and planning. When we practice that, we learn that good planning always costs less than good reacting. I must say it again. Good planning always costs less than good reacting. <laughs> the more time we prepare for the meeting before the meeting, the less time we'll have to spend doing damage control after the meeting. In other words, all's well that starts well. Now, hopefully, that ultimate secret to a good meeting I shared with you that day helped you to become more successful with your own meetings. Just remember that having that meeting before the meeting allows good leaders to never have to recover from a bad start. Okay, everyone, meeting adjourned. <laughs> that does it for this week's recap. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want to keep running to the roar, then just join me next week as I continue these micro lessons in review and I recap the 19th and 20th lessons learned in leadership. All you have to do is just come on back to the lion's den next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. You know, I want to thank you again for supporting me and watching the weekly roar today. I appreciate you. And until we meet again next Wednesday, remember, be powerful, but stay poised just like a lion. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den.
Thanks again and see you next week.